Okay, I think it's time to introduce uh, our second speaker. It's uh, Asaf Bartov from the Wikimedia Foundation, who is going to uh, have a lecture on the movement strategy and sea opportunities. Hello, everyone. Let me share my screen. Uh, thank you for giving me the time. I'm happy to be in another CE meeting. Um, and it's great to see all of you. It would have been even nicer uh, in person. Um, but as, as it was mentioned, we also see some new faces here that we wouldn't have seen in person probably. Uh, for those who may not know me, my name is Asaf Baltov. I work for the Wikimedia Foundation in the Community Development Department. Um, and recently I've been helping out a little with the movement strategy work, and that is what brings me to present <clears throat> today. Um, I want to offer you an up-to-date, um, concise uh, view or snapshot of the movement strategy um, and where it is, and to specifically highlight some opportunities I see, I would like to offer uh, to CE communities based on my familiarity with the region, with your communities. So uh, very briefly, let's try and catch up. I think this is probably in your way, right? This box of Zoom, can you see it? I now tried to minimize it. Um, <clears throat> So what is, uh, what is movement strategy? Let's very briefly remind ourselves what it is for anyone who may have wandered in uh, and uh, without uh, getting involved in movement strategy in the past few years. Um, the strategy is a process that has been going on for several years now and aims to give the entire movement a strategy, which in other words, in our case means a set of goals that are uh, high impact, that are very crucial to our mission of creating and sharing free knowledge. And not just these goals, but also suggested implementation steps. So not just that's where we want to go, but also here are the directions or paths or initiatives that we think will get us there. That's what we mean by a strategy. And with a movement as complicated as ours, um, it is understandably uh, complex to come up with these goals and implementation steps. And in a movement as participatory as ours, it is uh, even more complex and naturally a bit slower because we want to accommodate uh, a lot of discourse, a lot of conversation, a lot of consultation, um, as you have seen in the past few years. Um, it's also clear that there's no one size fits all here. Our, the diversity and the, the, the truly global nature of our movement means that what works in one region, one language, one community may not work, may even backfire in another. And so the needs and the capacities to handle those needs differ greatly between regions, between communities. And, and that means that the strategy we have is at the same time comprehensive. It covers all kinds of needs and capacities, not all of them shared or relevant to all communities, but broadly all of them are relevant for the movement. And at the same time, it is very ambitious, certainly from the viewpoint of each of your individual communities. If each of you as an individual contributor or as a member of a CE community looks at the strategy as a whole, it is definitely very ambitious. I can also tell you it looks very ambitious from my perspective as an employee of the Wikimedia Foundation who is used to a global view, it still looks ambitious to me. Uh, that's a good thing, we want to be ambitious. Um, so to catch, to catch you up again on broadly how we got where we are today, we have a strategic direction. We've had it for four years now, since 2017. We had this uh, strategic direction of broadly where we need to go. And uh, one possible summary of that strategic direction 
is that it is clear we need a more inclusive and people-centered approach. It is clear we need to improve the user experience on the main platform, that is the wikis, and in tools around the wikis. And um, going sort of one circle outward, it is also um, clear that we want to be more than the wikis. We want to be, uh, as, as the strategic direction phrased it, the essential infrastructure for the whole free knowledge ecosystem. That was the strategic direction, and that's not a strategy yet. That just points at a future and says, we want to get there. It doesn't say how, right? It doesn't have those suggested um, uh, directions. And so we had to move from that to actual specific, concrete strategic recommendations. And that took a couple of years. And in 2019, uh, following a, a complex and, and multi um, um, lateral, multi uh, uh, sided process that you've all been at least somewhat aware of, I'm sure, uh, we came up with these strategic recommendations that was already also already a little while ago in 2019. And they were basically 10 big recommendations. And each of them had some suggested initiatives. So the recommendation is to do this. And that means these three or four or seven initiatives, like these specific steps would get us um, to achieve this recommendation. And most of those recommendations were focused on uh, roles and responsibilities on changing the overall structure of the movement, who does what, who uh, is related to whom in what role, um, and broadly to decentralize and share power. That came out loud and clear from a lot of the consultations and conversations and uh, brainstorming and working groups uh, that came up with these recommendations. At the same time as wanting to decentralize and um, uh, share power, uh, th that itself amplifies the need for cooperation and coordination, right? When things are decentralized, coordination becomes even more important than it is today, when we have a relatively centralized structure. Uh, so that's my one slide summary of the strategic recommendations. By the way, these links are here uh, deliberately in case any of this is new to you or you feel you need a refresher. Uh, the slides will be up as soon as I finish talking. I'll upload them to comments under the category for the conference so you can see and click on those links and refresh your memory. So zooming in one level further, we went to a transition phase from the recommendations toward implementation. And during this transition phase, which took place the, the past two years, um, these recommendations were discussed, again, all over the world, multiple conversations, calls, channels, uh, telegram channels, etc., cetera, um, in order to prioritize among the dozens of initiatives that the recommendations included, because yes, we want to do all these things, but which of them do we want to do first? Uh, given that the strategy has 2030 as its sort of target date, uh, which ones do we want to do in 2022 and which ones make more sense to start doing in 2025 or seven. Uh, so this process tried to prioritize the initiatives to think about interdependencies between the initiatives, et cetera. Um, and uh, this year we came up with uh, um, this, we as a movement came up with this prioritized list of initiatives. <clears throat> Again, we want to do all of them. Some of them were identified as more crucial or more urgent. And of those initiatives, some of them are already, as we speak, actively being implemented uh, with a significant investment by the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, some examples that you are probably aware of, uh, the code of conduct, which was a strong recommendation in the movement strategy, um, has been worked on uh, uh, or facilitated by the Wikimedia Foundation, conversations about it, the Universal Code of Conduct was approved by the board, now there are conversations about enforcing the Code of Conduct, that's well underway. Uh, another recommendation that was mentioned, or initiative that was mentioned within a recommendation, was to allow private incident reporting, which we don't have today at the moment, um, and that's um, 
I think not quite being worked on yet, but is already scheduled on a foundation uh, developer team. Uh, so that's that's going to happen. That's that's resourced and planned. Um, the enterprise level API, the Wikimedia enterprise API, was just announced a few weeks ago uh, publicly and has been worked on, of course, leading up to this announcement. Um, and the movement charter, which is, I think, uh, one of the most important uh, developments or, or initiatives from the strategy um, in its foundational role, its, its uh, infrastructural role, uh, for all the other changes that we want to see, all the sharing of power, the decentralization, the roles and responsibilities uh, are, are to some extent going to be uh, encoded or framed or bounded by the movement charter. And as you uh, probably noticed in the last uh, few months, we have been working on um, electing, a, electing and selecting a movement charter drafting committee. Uh, the, the process that just ended uh, a few days ago, we now have a movement charter drafting committee, and they're going to start working uh, in the coming months. More on that a little later. So this was a quick bird's eye uh, view of this multi-year process. Again, these links have a lot more information in case any of this suddenly sounds interesting and you haven't been paying attention until now. Uh, which is understandable because we all have a lot to do. Uh, other initiatives that are also part of the strategy don't yet have, to my knowledge, active implementation efforts, at least not documented well on Meta. Uh, for example, resources for newcomers has been identified as a glaring, urgent need. We need more resources, we need better resources, we need updated resources for newcomers, we need video resources for newcomers. Everybody agrees, very few people are doing something about it. And to be clear, the foundation is not doing something about it. Um, so that's an initiative that is waiting for implementation. Um, uh, other examples are uh, identifying high impact topics in terms of uh, knowledge content. Uh, or identifying policies that hinder knowledge equity. Uh, some other uh, examples of initiatives that don't have quite that level of uh, facilitated resourced attention already going on. My point is that different parts, different initiatives in the strategy are at very different, not just at different levels of progress, but also at different levels of resourcing. In other words, their rate of progress is likely to be very different, right? Then the, the, the not actively resourced initiatives are going to progress a lot slower or maybe not progress at all, while the ones that are resourced and facilitated are going to progress uh, more quickly. That's to be expected. So this is our uh, sort of picture of the status quo. And one piece of uh, uh, news, or I hope not news for most of you, is that all of these initiatives the ones that are already being worked on and the ones that are not are eligible for movement strategy grants. And if you haven't heard of those, that's a new uh, grants uh, channel or a new grants program, if you will, movement strategy implementation grants and is a, a, a pool of money and a process that is dedicated to initiatives that are implementing the movement strategy. And I quote directly from this page, you can click that link when you have the slides. The projects supported by these grants can be big or small, but all of them must make a case to advance at least one initiative. That's the, the point of these grants. It's, they're not instead of all the existing grants programs, you can continue to use those. But if you're interested in working on movement strategy implementation, and my goal is that at the end of this talk, you will be interested, uh, these grants are available to you for any and all of these initiatives, not just for the ones that are already uh, worked on. I also want to share a few words about what the strategy is not. Um, and I hope uh, that I get to dispel some misconceptions, um, because if you do have those misconceptions, I certainly want to dispel them. Um, so the strategy is not something done by other people. I use 
uh, capital letters deliberately. It's not this thing that is going on by who? Eh, we're not sure, people in San Francisco, people in other communities, anyway, not by us. Uh, if that's how you feel, I really want you to change your mind. Uh, the strategy is not something that will be done for us, that should be done for us by other people, by paid staff, by people in San Francisco, by people in wherever. It should be done by all of us uh, within the, the um, uh, strictures and limitations that we all have. Some of us have uh, come from very small communities. Some of us have staff, some of us don't. That's all understood. I'm not saying everybody should pitch in some, some constant amount of work or time, but I am saying we are all stakeholders in this movement strategy. It is not something that's just kind of going on somewhere else and um, we should not be involved. We should all be involved. It is in our interest to be involved as contributors and stakeholders, and it is in the movement's interest that we be involved, all of us. Um, a, a related point is that it's not some obscure process that is happening in some dark smoke-filled room that would only be relevant to you when it's over. It's not something that we just kind of have to wait out and one day in, in a year or three years, we will have some like some, uh, okay, all the implementation is ready. Welcome to the new movement. Um, again, if that is your approach, like we're sitting this out and we're just waiting to be told what was decided. Um, that is not a good approach to the movement strategy. Um, again, the process needs us and needs our input. Um, our input can be critical, by the way. Our input is not just uh, work. It's not just doing things, contributing, writing articles, or developing tools, or whatever it is. Our input can and, and should also be, uh, I don't think this is a good way to do it. Here's what I think should be done, or this doesn't take into account these needs that maybe you're not seeing but are very visible to us, that's useful, helpful, needed input and help uh, to the strategy. Uh, so again, I'm encouraging you not to sit it out, not to wait to be told what the implementation ended up being, what projects have been done. Uh, this is something we should all uh, take part in to the, to the degree we are able. But I also want to tell you, speaking of uh, our limitations and our resources, the strategy need not be a distraction from what we already do, from our existing projects, our existing uh, interests in our communities, in our chapters, affiliates. Um, the strategy, as I said, is very comprehensive. There is, uh, I think, in, in every community I can think of, in every affiliate I can think of, at least some of your existing activities and priorities and programs do map directly, easily, to at least one of the initiatives, which means you can continue to pursue them and basically be pursuing strategy implementation, right? So again, the strategy, even if so far you feel has been going on elsewhere by other people, not by you, um, can actually cover, can actually be re-perceived re as something that you are already part of and maybe just weren't framing it uh, as uh, that way. So these were some uh, misconceptions that I expect at least some of you may have had and I wanted to um, try and change your mind about them. Uh, to complete the picture about status quo before I get to some examples and recommendations, and then if we have uh, time left, we can have a quick discussion. <clears throat> I want to project um, a view into what is the way ahead, what, what's coming up in movement strategy. And so these uh, four initiatives listed here are at the moment being proactively facilitated by the Wikimedia Foundation. So there are people at the Wikimedia Foundation staff who are making sure these four things movement charter, universal code of conduct, hubs, and peer networks for capacity development, uh, who are making sure these things are moving along. It doesn't mean the Wikimedia Foundation is responsible for these things. It doesn't mean the Wikimedia Foundation has, uh, you know, uh, uh, owned them and nobody can, you know, um, uh, contribute or, or criticize or anything like that. It means the foundation, uh, if you will, owns the responsibility for keeping them moving. 
Whereas some of these other initiatives that I mentioned, the foundation is not owning the responsibility to keep them moving. They're, they're sort of up for grabs and they may not move if nobody else decides to make sure they move, right? They progress. But these things are moving and will continue to move because there are people making sure that happens and facilitating the process. Again, they're not making all the decisions. Um, so these, all these processes, and again, I hope you have been exposed to at least some communications about these initiatives. Uh, they're all iterative processes. They're all processes where the uh, implementation is planned together with key stakeholders and communities. And this means you, even if it hasn't meant you uh, in practice concretely until now, it really does mean you, you can get involved in every one of these um, initiatives. And I'll say words about each of them. The movement charter, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be a bit like a constitution. It's going to be a foundational document that will once and for all, or at least once and for a while, because it can change uh, like other things, um, it will, however, concretely and clearly define some outer bounds, some broad um, definitions of roles and responsibilities and mutual accountability of the different group organizations in the movement. And this is needed because very often, and those of you who have been involved in the strategy or in similar conversations have often found ourselves or yourselves, or yeah, we all found ourselves, um, facing this situation of, okay, there's a clear need and everybody recognizes this need. And now we don't know who is in charge of it, who is supposed to be taking care of this need. And maybe the situation is that we're all looking at each other and nobody feels like they want to take care of this need. Or maybe even we have multiple groups or actors ready to take care of this need, but we're all like, well, should I, can I, may I? Um, um, and that's not a good situation to be in. It, it would be better if it were clearer or if it were uh, at least determinable, right? If it were easier to determine what can or should or may be done um, towards certain goals. So the movement charter will provide that and will help us collaborate across projects, across affiliates, across organizations uh, better. It is of course crucial that it be drafted by um, a representative uh, sample or a representative group or committee of the various current stakeholders in the movement. Um, as, as you, I hope, have seen in the movement charter drafting committee composition, we have representatives from multiple regions and uh, affiliates and individual volunteers and Wikimedia uh, Foundation. And even that drafting committee is not a decision maker. It's a drafting committee, right? They're, they are on the hook. They are accountable for creating a charter draft. But that draft will then be open to um, uh, comments, feedback, collaboration by absolutely everybody. So the timeline for that, we've just finished setting up the uh, uh, drafting committee. This drafting committee will have five months to come up with a first draft the charter and people will be, uh, even during those five months, people will be able to get uh, involved. Uh, this draft will then have a uh, three month uh, sort of amendments period, feedback and, and uh, uh, iteration period, and ultimately uh, start gathering uh, ratifications or endorsements. And uh, sort of in parallel to that, uh, we will be setting up or, or we will be facilitating the setting up of the global council, uh, which is a much larger body, a body that is designed to have much wider, uh, broader representation, uh, sort of a parliament, if you will, uh, where, um, uh, which, is, which is set out in the recommendations and which the charter will give certain responsibilities and even powers to. Um, and around June 22, we um, hope to be in a good place with a ratified, agreed upon move. Other things sets up the um, uh, normative and uh, uh, maybe even legal framework for this global council to uh, emerge and start taking on these powers and responsibilities. 
So it's a huge and very, very impactful piece of the strategy implementation. It will uh, absolutely transform our movement and the way uh, discussions and decisions and, and uh, 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 initiatives handled in the movement. It, I hope, we all hope, it will also reduce some of the friction in the movement, some of the chaos in the movement, and some of the frustration and confusion in the movement, at least those parts of it that are uh, avoidable, right, uh, unnecessary. There's always going to be a certain degree of unavoidable chaos and frustration because it's a wiki, uh, things are wikis, and it's a very diverse movement, and there are language barriers. All of that is the unavoidable part of frustration and chaos. But there is an avoidable part that we are not avoiding today, and uh, this process will hopefully contribute to that. Um, another initiative that is being um, promoted, facilitated by the Wikimedia Foundation, by the way, these, these last couple of slides I have stolen, I'm sorry, uh, adopted from um, my colleague uh, Karel, who's been the process architect of the whole movement strategy process. And you can tell that I stole these slides because they have pictures on them and mine don't. So anyway, um, hubs, regional or thematic hubs, um, are supposed to be a sort of mid-level or intermediary body uh, organization uh, between the very local level of Wikimedia communities and Wikimedia organizing and the very global level of Wikimedia organizing. And they, it has been discussed forever before this current strategy process. It has been discussed for at least a decade, uh, the need for this sort of regional network. And indeed, we have, we already have some regional networks. CEE is one such network and exists has existed for, I think, about a decade now, right? Um, and we have other regional networks like Iberocop and Wiki Arabia and Wiki Indaba and ECAP um, and a few smaller ones. Um, so the, the need for trans community, transnational, translingual, certainly um, networking has been recognized for a long time. The feeling that came up very strongly in the strategy process is that these networks that are currently unofficial. None of these networks is a legal entity, is an incorporated entity. None of them has um, um, significant uh, decision-making powers or significant resourcing as a network, right? The CEE doesn't have a budget, except to the extent that members, certain member affiliates of CEE uh, are contributing at a network level, right? And, and give grants and, and enable things, and that's wonderful. But CEE is not an entity that has a budget and, and, and the staff, et cetera, et cetera. And so hubs, as distinct from the existing regional networks, are envisioned to have, or at least to potentially have, or potentially grow into having um, that level of resourcing and staff and decision-making power, maybe grant-making um, at a regional level. And the reason this is perceived as very valuable, again, this is something that came up very strongly uh, in the movement strategy uh, process uh, by, by multiple working groups and in multiple regional conversations, is that it matches principles that we in the wiki world hold dear, principles of subsidiarity, principles of self-management and governance, and principles of um, context, contextualization of needs, of capacities, of projects, of initiatives, even of goals um, that make more sense in a local or regional uh, context. So a lot, everything I just said is a lot to hope for or a lot to sort of project as desires or expectations on these yet to be defined entities that are called hubs. But that's exactly the, the issue here. That's, that's the implementation problem that we're facing with hubs, is how do we create these structures, these regional or thematic structures, in a way that does uh, fulfill or, or embody these principles while also uh, maintaining um, uh, accountability, while also avoiding um, uh, bias, for example, right? One of the concerns people express about hubs is that the Wikimedia Foundation, for all its flaws, is kind of neutral 
in our you know, regional politics, et cetera. And they give grants and they do things kind of unrelated to sort of national sentiments, et cetera. Whereas maybe my regional hub will be run or, or managed by people who have some uh, national sentiments against my country or my language, et cetera, et cetera. These are concerns we have heard and um, there are ways to mitigate them, but I'm, I'm pointing out it's not trivial. It, it, it's not free of problems. It's not just, okay, let's set up a thing in CEE and give it a bunch of money. And there we go. We have a regional entity. There are many questions uh, to be solved in hubs. And, and in other words, I would say we are less, um, less far along in, in towards implementing hubs than we are with the universal code of conduct or with the movement charter. Towards that um, and towards sort of nailing down some of this uh, sort of cloud of expectations and problems surrounding the concept of hubs, um, there's going to be a, sort of an event dedicated to discussing hubs. Um, uh, and it was just announced today. Today, there's an email on Wikimedia L with um, the date in late November uh, this month uh, for an event, an online event that will be dedicated to hubs. It's an open event. You would all be able to attend it. Um, and it will be dedicated to making some progress on this question on towards implementing hubs. Again, the Wikimedia Foundation is facilitating this. The Wikimedia Foundation is not going to set up a hub for CEE or any other region. That's definitely going to be at some point up to you, up to CEE, up to other regional networks. Uh, but the foundation is facilitating this, is, is hosting this event, is trying to help everybody, uh, including CEE, make progress uh, towards this. I hope you are aware that in parallel to the foundation's sort of overall facilitation of this, there are some proto hubs, there are some uh, uh, groups that are planning or, or beginning to brainstorm or think or research uh, what a hub would entail. And one of them is the CEE Proto Hub. If you are uh, not aware of this yet, I encourage you to talk to uh, folks from Wikimedia Polska or Wikimedia Österreich, uh, Poland and Austria um, for um, the latest information about it. So uh, finally, uh, capacity development. Um, again, something that came up again and again in the movement strategy process. The main recommendation here uh, everybody agrees capacity development need. People need their capacity built. They're, we need to have, we, the movement, need to do a lot more capacity development. Um, how do we do it? What is the global recommendation here? The main idea is peer support networks have more capacity development done by peers and less by sort of central intervention. Um, and to foster and facilitate and support communities of practice, right? People gathering around a particular practice, whether that is um, uh, GLAM partnerships or data donations or uh, photographic expeditions or whatever kinds of activities and practices uh, or, you know, bot writing, whatever uh, type of activity related to the Wikimedia movement uh, can have a supported, facilitated community of practice where people gather together. Uh, one person compared this to the medieval notion of guilds. Uh, I think it's a, it's a uh, perhaps good metaphor if we ignore the sort of exclusionary uh, side of historical guilds. Um, and so this initiative is um, largely, so, so this one is less driven by the Wikimedia Foundation. In this um, initiative, we expect ideas and, and progress to be suggested by communities, by organizations, in other words, by you. Um, and we are very eager, not just willing, but eager to support you with movement strategy implementation grants. So if, if creating such a peer support network or a particular community of practice, or even an overall model for how such communities of practice may work, or research towards creating these things is something you feel you want to do, by all means, uh, start developing a grant proposal uh, to be supported in doing this right now. 
And in addition to the movement strategy team at the Wikimedia Foundation that is sort of facilitating all this and helping set up conversations and events, there is a, another team in the Wikimedia Foundation, the team I actually belong to, the community development team, that is uh, the sort of professional contact about this, that that's what we do, right? Capacity building is what this Duke team does. <clears throat> and that team is also eager and available to partner with you uh, uh, about any ideas or initiatives you have about capacity building as strategy implementation. So these are, this concludes my sort of picture of where we are, where we're going. I hope this helped people who have been either completely out of the picture on strategy or conversely who have sort of burnt out on the information overload. And I know that's a problem uh, from the strategy. Uh, it's been years, there's been a lot of communication. There are some walls of text. It's all in English or mostly in English, uh, uh, not all in English, but it's, it's a lot of it is in English. A lot of it is not translated yet. So I hope this helped situate you in where we are, where we're going. And now I want to answer the question that some of you may have, which is, all right, this is all well and good, but how is it relevant to us? How is it relevant to me in the Lithuanian community or the Greek community or the Turkish community uh, or the Macedonian, uh, North Macedonian community? And I want to offer you um, an answer to that. Is it relevant to your wiki, your language, your country? Spoiler, yes, it is relevant. And I want to suggest to you that there are in fact three types of relevance that all this has to your work, your country, your wiki. <clears throat> the first type of relevance of all this to your work is actually very pragmatic. In other words, I think this is relevant, relevant relevance for all of you, large and small. And that is, there is now new resourcing available. I say resourcing and not just money. There's new money or there's money that is newly available. And there is also time and attention that's available. And those of you who have been around for a few years, those of you who have tried to engage the foundation on certain projects may, have, may know that in the past, depending on the topic, there are certain things where it's been hard to get the foundation to pay attention to your desire to make progress on a certain thing, right? Maybe you were only told, okay, yeah, submit a grant proposal and you know, we'll consider it, but, but nobody at the foundation is really ready to work with you, to pay attention, to follow this. Um, and there are reasons for that, right? It's not that the foundation doesn't care. The foundation must prioritize itself, of course, and priorities were different. This has changed now. There is this new moment of attention to this set of uh, implementation uh, priorities. And as long as your existing work, as I mentioned, can be framed as advancing a particular initiative and you will need to make the case, you will need to show how this project or this idea is going to make progress against one of the dozens of initiatives in the strategy. And if you don't know what those initiatives are, I don't have time to walk through all of them, but by all means, click the link and start reading the descriptions of the initiatives. Um, by all means, frame it, explain it, and propose some measurable uh, project plans, some plans that can be evaluated so that we can end up saying, okay, this did advance the initiative according to these measurements or, or not. Um, then you are able to secure additional resources for this work that you are already doing or already interested in doing, okay? I think that is relevant to literally all of you. All of you are doing some work. I think all of you are doing, at least some of the work all of you are doing is definitely relevant to one of these initiatives. And therefore there must be something that all of you can frame or channel as relevant and therefore as falling under this new kind of resourcing, money and time that's available in the movement, specifically from the foundation, but also possibly <clears throat> from other peers. So that's, I think, the, the most, the, the widest appeal of relevance uh, to all communities. Another kind of relevance here is for new work. And again, this sort of new, new moment, this new attention, this new resourcing is enabling, is making it easier to try innovating or experimenting with work that maybe you weren't doing until now, 
Now, we have always been able to experiment theoretically, right? And, and in practice, the CEE community, for example, has innovated uh, in a number of ways the, the ethnic uh, ethnography, sorry, the ethnography, ethnographical uh, photo expeditions, CE Spring, right? These are things, these are innovative programs that have come out of CEE, uh, Wiki Loves Earth. Um, but this moment is making it easier, is making it easier to innovate, easier to experiment. Again, there's more attention and more potential partners for you in innovating and experimenting. This may be relevant to only some of you. Maybe some of you are already so overwhelmed, you don't have time, you don't have the uh, volunteer base or energy to innovate or experiment. So I'm putting this as number two. It may not be relevant to absolutely all of you, but I think it is relevant to many of you. And the third type of relevance I want to suggest to you is to go out of your community, your language, your country, and actually more proactively and directly influence global work, right? The first two were about what you can do in your community, in your language, in your country. But another thing you can do towards strategy implementation is to step up and join a sort of global level of work. You can be one of the people who literally strategize, who literally design new models, new structures, new programs, not just for your affiliate or country or language or wiki, but for the movement or to, you know, at least co-design, right? To brainstorm, to join a task force, to uh, maybe not even come up with any solutions, but to facilitate other, other, other uh, people or, or to facilitate a group of brainstorming. This is something theoretically any of you can do. Uh, I do recognize the language barrier is an issue. Uh, uh, for, for whereas, you know, pages uh, can be translated and lectures like this can be interpreted in real time, uh, creative, interactive brainstorming work is a lot harder to do uh, with uh, real, real time interpretation. So uh, uh, realistically, a lot of this global level work will require working English um, still. But if you do have that, people in your community have that, you can also sort of step up. And I realize, again, this is relevant for fewer of you, um, but you can um, really influence global work, global structures, global ideas. Again, those don't have to come from San Francisco. We don't want them to come from San Francisco. Um, and they don't have to come from you know, the big communities, the rich communities. Uh, they certainly don't have any monopoly on good ideas. So I hope I've convinced you in at least one of these three claims of relevance that all of, all of the uh, aforementioned uh, strategy implementation stuff is at least potentially relevant to your community uh, and your work. Well, you say, maybe so, maybe no. Do you have some examples? And the answer is I do. Uh, so these are some examples I took directly from the initiatives page that I linked to. And these are examples I'm suggesting are particularly relevant to CEE. I do recognize that not everything is super relevant or super uh, um, um, practical for a CEE community to work on. But here's one example. One, one initiative calls for combating misinformation. Misinformation as a sort of neutral term for fake news, disinformation, right? That's like intentional, uh, uh, intentionally false information, uh, but just also just, you know, out of date information, biased information, et cetera, et cetera. And again, this is something we Wikimedians have always been doing, right? This is something we know well from our Wiki life, but it is also a strategic priority. We've, we all know the world we live in now. We all know this has become more of an issue with uh, the politics of the day and also with uh, social networks and the ease with which misinformation is amplified. And so um, I think this phenomenon, while global, uh, exists in particular in several CE countries and is affecting wikis in several CE languages. And therefore, I think it would be interesting to have CE perspectives, CE ideas, uh, about misinformation, because again, we don't want all of our thinking, all of our solutions, all of our brainstorming about misinformation to come from, for example, US politics, 
right? That certainly allowed, you know, voice, allowed force uh, by sheer numbers, by affluence, yes. But we should also be able to uh, benefit from the perspective, the ideas, the circumstances of how these dynamics of misinformation uh, appear and, and uh, influence CE languages, CE countries, etc. So, okay, how do we do it? What can we actually do? Again, these are just examples. These are examples of concrete steps you could do. You could undertake some research on what misinformation uh, exists or is attempted on your wiki. Again, this is something that's always happened on all wikis, but maybe from a particular country or a particular language, we can learn something about the shape of deliberate attempts at misinformation. And maybe that shape is not the same shape it is in the US or in Brazil or elsewhere. So I think that's a valuable undertaking and definitely uh, uh, eligible for support as a strategy implementation uh, effort or project. Uh, another way, a completely different way you could address or try to implement combating misinformation is to uh, create tools, technical tools, or to innovate processes, to invent uh, processes or, or criteria or tests uh, to effectively combat misinformation. Again, this may look different than the same, uh, uh, than tools or processes with the same goal uh, in other regions. Uh, and this would be, of course, especially interesting in wikis that are shared by more than one country, such as the Russian Wikipedia, uh, or in, on geopolitically sensitive topics like wikis of countries that are in conflict, like Armenia and Azerbaijan, Ukraine and Russia, et cetera. Um, I think these are, uh, very valuable uh, uh, sources of information, insight, and ideas for the entire movement. I hope that's a clear uh, example. Example number two is hubs. Again, this is something that is uh, ongoing. It is, it is making some progress. And uh, what can you do about it? Well, obviously, work, you can help out in preparing a CEE hub. There's already some planning going on, as I mentioned, um, um, driven uh, by Wikimedia Poland and Wikimedia Austria, but uh, I know for a fact they are very, very eager to have all of you uh, participate and help. Uh, attend this event uh, that was just announced today at the end of the month and, and learn about this, the thinking in other proto hubs and see how that translates or doesn't to the CE uh, situation. And I also invite you to look at an, an example from um, a, a, a previous uh, grant round uh, that is research about hubs from the Arabic communities done by uh, Anas from uh, Morocco. And he did, posted on Meta uh, a very clear, well-researched uh, analysis of opinions and situations uh, in the various Arabic communities, right? They share a wiki, the Arabic uh, Wikipedia, but they're in different countries, different situations, and they all shared opinions, hopes, expectations uh, about a future uh, Arabic hub or Wiki Arabia hub, what it should look like, what it should do, what it should not do, where it should be situated, etc. It's all in this interesting report that is linked from this slide. If you want to work on a CE hub, uh, take a look to get an idea of the kind of research work that we want to see and we would support with a grant. Uh, Asad, I'm sorry, yes. but uh, the next session will start in about seven minutes, and I'm happy to devote part oh. of the break to your talk, but uh, no, 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 no. Uh, please. Uh, sorry, I, I don't have no, my... No, I mean, I love listening to you, and, I, no. and I, I'm happy to share the break time with you uh, on, on your talk, but... Uh, no, no, people, people deserve a break, so I really just had a, a couple more um, examples, and you can Thank just you. look at them, you can just look at them uh, in the slides. Uh, thank you for your attention. I hope I have convinced you, uh, even if you weren't involved in strategy so far, to now take an interest. It's a, it's a different phase. It's an interesting moment in movement strategy, and you can all get involved. I hope you look at some of these links. I look forward to talking to you. You can uh, catch the strategy team at this email. You can catch me on any channel, and I wish you a productive conference. Thank you very much.
Okay, thank you, Asaf. Thank you for your presentation.